Hello everyone, I hope you all are doing well. Happy New Year. This is 3D Printed Animatronic Creature Part 39. This is Mole Prep. Just wanted to show you what I've been dealing with as far as getting this thing prepped for molding. And uh, some of these 3D prints as far as the molds and the, the master creature, uh, I'm just showing you how I'm blocking out some of these, uh, I guess, scars from the from the supports and uh and I reprinted the creature again but this is a a uh, a light gray but I was just wanting to show you that you know there there are some you know with FDM printer you know you're going to have some you know I call it like especially on the top of things as far as the layer lines or you'll see these these patterns that looks like a, a topical map but overall I am happy with the result especially with the FDM printer this is a quite good detail and and you really have to look for it but if you look carefully and I had plans to do this from the get-go and mentioned to you uh, in the video that I was going to be adding clay to this to get rid of some of these blemishes and uh, as far as sanding and things like that, but uh, I try to avoid that because I rather not take away. I rather add to it because taking away could, you know, change. It could change things. But uh, but as you see here, you you really don't notice it. Uh, I mean, even you know, just a few inches away. But like things like this, this has to be repaired under underneath the chin. And by me sculpting this on the chin, uh, and this is, you know, from supports. And I have tested other supports as far as a tree. But, uh, and you'll see that later. But a lot of these things is, is that this thing is one big massive print. And, and once again, I did not want to go resin. But if you see here, and... And once again, it does look like a, a topical map. But uh, but anyway, just to show you as far as, you know, the, the, the size of this compared to like a quarter or something. But like, and this is me just adding some clay and smoothing out some of this topology. And, uh, but I'm keeping the clay with the... Uh, the sculptor, sculpted area where I, you know, place the, the so-called wrinkles and folds. But even though that you might see me lay the clay over the, some of these wrinkles, I'm going to come back and, and re-sculpt them that way to give the same form. But as you see here, here's in Bamboo Studio, the tree supports, but I'd have to do a manual tree support because I met the I'm at the top of the, you know, or the end of the build platform here all the way around as far as around 250. But, uh, and then I wanted to see if just doing a test that I added the tree supports onto this, you know, I did a, I, you know, cut the model up just to see how it would look, if it would look any better. And as you see here, it still is the same. I still have it. anything that's hanging over and then on on top of anything organic. You're going to have these type of blemishes on as far as a, you know, FDM printer. And then I just cut the top and then uh, I did some adjustments in, in the settings and did uh, uh, as far as just to test to see if, if I could eliminate with, you know, the ironing on in the settings. And it, it did okay, but, you know, I, it, it's still there. I'm still going to have to sculpt. And anything larger, as far as a larger animatronic project or anything like that, you're going to have to, to sculpt it. Now, <clears throat> you could sculpt a creature directly onto the core that I've designed, and you just do away, do away with a, you know, the Z brush as far as a digital sculpt. But uh just to show you, this is my plans from the get go is to just sculpt and patch because, you know, once again everybody knows you 
you, you have to do some sanding with FDM printer or you have to add something to it and just cover it up. Even if it's like some kind of uh, sealer spray, you know, some Krylon Crystal Clear or things like that. But I'm just kind of just adding clay throughout this. But, you know, the biggest resin printer that would take this file is, I think it costs around $9,000. And then you'd have to have the resin and all that. But then we get into a whole nother realm of, you know, certain silicones. And then you wonder if that, if it's 10 base silicone or, and there is a, there is another silicone that works with resin, but it's sold by the, from what I found, it's sold by the, I guess the liter, and it would be, it's really quite expensive. More than, <clears throat> I mean, all of this is expensive, but it's just, uh, just a, just something that we're working through. But as you see anything lower, it has, you know, your layer lines. And, and I've just adjusted these settings, but, you know, a lot of these things you just don't see because you, you'd have to really look for them. But up close, you know, micro, you do see them. You know, back in the day, I used to get this clay and, and absolutely loved this clay. And it was Roma Plasticina. And it was number two. And and the thing about it is, I, I went through cases of this stuff back in the day, especially in the 80s and the 90s too. But it's just... It, it was a wonderful clay, and I got used to it, but, you know, it had sulfur in it. And when it had sulfur, you could never mold, use silicone, you know, it doesn't like sulfur. And I, but I just love that texture, and, and I've tested so many other clays. And don't get me wrong, monster clay is wonderful, but, you know, with my 62, about to be 62 years old, it gets kind of hard on them, on them knuckles. And after I get this all sculpted, I will apply a sealer like Crystal Clear over that as far as a, a light coat of, you know, a sealer. But, <clears throat> but you know, as, you know, and I'm going to add some de more detail to this, this chin and maybe, you know, a skin fold right there too and just do some testing. But this will be, you know, able to work with the animatronic some. And I just want to see what I can do as far as if when I add these things, is it going to change? And once again, that's going to be the thickness of the silicone there. It's going to be a little thicker. And, and I'm trying to keep this uniform because the thinner it is, it's going to be more flexible. It's going to be more lifelike, I'm hoping. And just if this is just a testing phase. But it's pretty cool. I'm happy with it. Yes, I am happy with the results of this print. And I'm just going to do some touch-ups, fix some of these blemishes, and fix around the eyelids a little bit. By me adding some to the eyelids and not removing is a plus because I designed this, this skin to be around the animatronic like eyelids. And I'm going to fix the nose to give it a little more, you know, uh, some nasal holes there. And and come in here around the lip also. And then I guess uh, add a little bit more to the lips and to the eyebrows. And, but it doesn't take long. It's just, you know, things I just have to do. And I'm my worst critic. And I want to make sure that this thing looks good. But from a distance of, you know, two feet, you really don't notice it. But I do. But once again, I just sit here and I mix me up some clay and get some of my old sculpting tools out. And <clears throat> just kind of fix some of these these blemishes here. And But I'm not adding a whole lot of clay. The only, I would say the only thick part of this clay that I'm adding in what area would be the the chin and I'm just kind of 
I'm playing around with it also because if you did anything bigger than this, you would have to sculpt it. I mean, uh, because once again, resin printers, I mean, unless there's some industrial printer resin that I don't know of, but I mean, <clears throat> you're, you're getting in over $10,000 there for just a, a resin print. And don't get me wrong, resin prints are beautiful but there's a lot more work to it than what it is for FDM print. And also the that large animatronic, you know, <clears throat> the head y'all seen me move in the last video, you know, that print's going to have to be also FDM printed and then sculpted over. And a lot of this will save clay and but yet you're still going to be using like doing silicone molding but like here i'm adding some you know some clay around the nostrils and also i'm making the nostrils a little bit i guess uh larger here so i could make you know the nasal holes there you know bigger or deeper uh, to make it look like it has you know holes there but uh you know, I just, I'm just, right now I'm not sculpting. I'm just laying in the areas that I'm going to be sculpting on and just continuing with the, the so-called wrinkles that I had put in ZBrush. And a lot of these things I see that, you know, when, <clears throat> when you're designing something or sculpting something digitally, you know, it looks good on 2D, but when you see it in 3D, well, it, that looks kind of weird, you know, but. You know, it, you know, I, I used to do a lot of, you know, even before digital stuff, you know, I used to sculpt a lot. And, and as y'all know, I, I did a lot of dentures and made a lot of teeth and, and I like making teeth and, but by me here is just sculpting all over again, like I used to, but. You know, it's just blending, and you also, you know, like, you can put rubbing alcohol on this print, and it won't hurt an FDM print. But I'm just adding the soft clay in the areas here, and I'll just continue adding to the areas to kind of match the wrinkles. And anything that's, anything that's like overhang is going to have a blemish. And anything on top is also going to have, you know, that, that, topical map look layer line but in here uh on the corners of the mouth are a little sharp so i'm going to bulk up the so-called the area there especially where it's going to be opening more to give it a little bit more strength and i know some people mentioned that you could add uh you know what is it a nylon material or or pantyhose material <clears throat> to make it where it's not going to be like a, uh, a anti-tear so it won't tear when it opens up but this this silicone that we're going to be using as far as the ecoflex 10 is going to be pretty flexible i don't think it's going to be necessary but we'll see and if it needs to be i will add that in the next pour if i you know need to do that but here i'm just you know adding some clay and and i'm trying to keep it <clears throat> Especially when I when I start spraying it with or or adding rubbing alcohol, I'm gonna try to keep that the base plate clean, and I'll probably be having a kind of a some plastic there, like a garbage bag of some sort around it, so I can keep that plate clean because that's part of the mold. And uh, but like <clears throat> when I was talking about tree supports, I didn't want to put tree supports on that on that uh, build platform there because I didn't want it to make any kind of a blemish on that on that base because that you know if it has a blemish there and then my core doesn't have that blemish that could be a problem and I, I'm just trying to avoid that a lot of these sculpting tools that I've got just collected over the years. I got so many, and and some of these are just a handful that I have. But you know, uh, 
I always like these Ken Bank tools, and uh, I have several of them, and they've always been, you know, and he's been, Ken Banks has been doing, uh, having these sculpting tools available for years, and I've always really enjoyed them. But, uh, but once again, you're, <clears throat> you're sculpting on a core just like you'd be sculpting on an armature. But this way, your armature is going to be a lot thicker and your, and your clay is going to be a lot thinner. But, but I've been working on other things, too, as far as that large creature and a newborn. I had a program, uh, an animatronic piece, and uh, just for testing. And I got that done. But, but this is what I also been working on. You know, as I, I tape this, tape this off. And I laid this clay here to block off the blemish. Anything that had a blemish or it looks like it has stringiness, I removed the strings because I don't want the silicone to grab that string and, you know, either damage the mother mole or damage the silicone, which I don't think it would, but I don't want anything to lock it in permanently into that mother mole. But I got the tape there because I didn't want it to be on the on any edges where it was going to be matching up to either the the positive or the negative part of the mole to the to the base plate that's on both of them but i'm just going to peel that tape off and that'll be ready but uh but overall as you see the big boy here i've been working on and i've been working on some other like the a future animatronic and i've been working on another project and hoping i'll be able to do some testing as uh as far as a prop that i've been wanting to try and see if I can get it to work but overall I'm happy with it and I hope y'all like this video I'm just it's uh it's fun it's just part of it and I hope y'all like thank y'all later